Wow, 2021 was an amazing year. I hope it was for you as well. But you know, there's really some lessons learned that many of my clients learned throughout the year that I wanna share with you. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the lessons learned in sales from 2021 that you can apply moving forward that will help you accelerate your sales. Make sure as well you watch to the end of this video. There's a couple little secrets I'll share at the very end that I think you'll find helpful. Hi, I'm Sean Casemore and I help you learn how to be a high performing sales professional so that you you can earn more in less time. If that sounds good to you, make sure you click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my upcoming videos, as well as click the like button on this video. And make sure in every video, if you have comments to share your own best practices, add them to the comments so that others can learn from you as well. So the first lesson from 2021 in sales is this, and it's a, it's a big one. Selling as we know it is dead. There is no longer a salesperson. Now, before you panic, I'm not saying a robot's coming to take your job, but here's what I am suggesting. When you look at recent studies around buyer behavior, especially in the B2B market, right? Buyers today are using information around them to inform their decisions. They're using people, they're doing research online and offline to inform their decisions. They're not engaging with salespeople early on, at least on purpose, to help inform their decisions. So when they're coming to the salesperson, it's with a lot of information and at least some idea of what they're looking for. What that really means then is in sales, our role is changing. Uh, could you tell me about some of your phones, please? Oh. Uh... We're becoming a sales concierge in a way, meaning that we take you by the hand, not, not literally, but we take you by the hand and we're gonna help inform you along the way. So we're gonna say that this piece of information is relevant, this one is not, let me add this to it, let me introduce you to my team who can answer some more of your questions. And we're really escorting our buyer through the sales process and helping them make an informed decision. That's really how our role has changed. So if you're still walking into somebody's office saying, hey, what am I gonna sell them today? I'd suggest you change your approach a bit. Think about how can I help this buyer who's trying to make a decision, help them clear through the mess, right? Gain clarity so they can make a quick decision and hey, then maybe you'll be part of that decision. The second lesson learned from 2021, and this really continues to evolve, as I mentioned earlier, and you've seen in multiple studies I've referenced here before, it's getting harder and harder for buyers to make a decision for a lot of reasons, right? They're overwhelmed with information. There's a lot of people involved now in decisions, unlike it maybe 10, 15 years ago where one person made that decision. Now, I think organizationally, those are all good things, but from a salesperson's standpoint, they can make it very challenging because their buyers are indecisive and they tend to ghost us when they're not ready to make a decision. And we wonder what's happened. What I wanna to suggest to you is if we take from this lesson as to what's happened here, the way we can really inject ourselves and ensure that our buyers are reliant on us throughout their journey so that we can be their sales concierge, as I mentioned earlier, is that we add value. Now, you've heard me talk about this multiple times before. Value is in the eyes of the beholder, meaning what your buyer suggests is value is what you need to provide. And in these days, a lot of what is valued are tools that help buyers make decisions, information that inform buyers, right? Keep in mind, if you go onto Google and you put in any sort of term, you're gonna get all sorts of answers, oft times opposing answers. So buyers are seeking clarity. Hey, baby. I can see clearly now, baby. So if you can step in, offer clarity, offer credible resources, information, support, subject matter experts that you can bring in that can offer, all this adds to value and it helps your buyers make decisions. So the more you can add value, the more you can smooth out that line that your buyers are taking when it comes to making a decision, the faster they'll make a decision and they'll credit you for having been the one to help them get there quickly. If you're enjoying these tips so far, make sure you click the like button in this video and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date when I release new videos each and every Let's get back to it. This next tip relative to what we've learned in 2021 about sales is that we really need to empower our buyers to buy. You know, more and more studies are coming out saying that today's buyers really want a self-managed buying process. Now, that makes sense in the retail sector, right? If they wanna go online and buy something from Amazon, that's, that's no problem. They can self-manage that. I think we like this one. What, what's it called? Deep Slumber 3000. You're buying it on Amazon, aren't you? Yep, they have drones now. But if you're in B2B, it's a little bit different. Your company might not have a shopping cart. Or if you're selling a million dollar service 
or million dollar product, they might not want to just dump that in the shopping cart. Although I know companies that are doing it, but the key is this, the way we empower our buyers to buy is we give them clarity. So I often tell a lot of my clients, coaching clients and the teams that I train, create your own FAQ. Take the questions that you get frequently from prospects. Really create your own frequently asked questions document that you can share. You can laminate it, put it on color paper. And we're not talking about a book here. I'm not saying this is a 22 page document. I'm talking about a single page or maybe double sided and it's a leave behind. So when you talk to a prospect in person, or virtually afterwards you say you know in my experience there's been some key questions that you'll want to answer as you move forward I've created a document to try and answer those I'd like to share that with you now and then maybe we can book a follow-up for next Tuesday at 10 what does your calendar look like then that document is obviously branded it's got your contact information on it'll sit on their desk if it's in physical form or in their inbox it's not only going to keep you top of mind but it's going to help inform them and empower them to make that buying decision and guess who they're going to credit for helping them that's right, it's you. So empower your buyers to buy. Create that FAQ document for yourself, something simple based on all the questions you're getting, and you're gonna find new prospects, find that extremely helpful as they move forward in the buying process. This next one here, this last tip I have for you, before there's a, a couple bonus tips I wanna share, but before we do that, this last one's gonna seem a little bit controversial, but here it is, slow down, to speed up the sale. That's right, slow down. Too many sales professionals I meet today are pushing for the sale, right? And you seem to have these two extremes. You got the people that never ask for the sale at all, right? But then we have these other folks that are just pushing, driving, driving. I gotta get more sales, I'm gonna ask for the sale, I'm gonna move on to the next person. Here's the thing, in most cases, when you push hard for the sale, you diminish trust. Now that depends on what you're selling. There are some unique circumstances where pushing being a little bit assertive makes complete sense. Price is not important. No, price is very important, actually. Okay, you got me, take me away. Okay, it's a little bit expensive, but let me tell you, it's worth it. But generally speaking, when you slow down, you focus more on the buyer, their needs, and the relationship. What you tend to build is trust, which means it doesn't really matter what you're selling, the buyer is gonna trust you because you've slowed down. You've put their best interest at mind, not yours. So if we can learn anything from 2021, and it's really been building up to this point, it's that we need to slow down in order to speed up the sale. Here's a little bit of a bonus tip for you, if you will. I said I had some. First off, there's no such thing as virtual selling. I mean, there are virtual tools, or better yet, tools we use to connect and speak with and present to buyers virtually. But virtual selling, that's just another tool in the toolbox. You see, moving forward, from now on, buyers, at least some of them, are gonna want to speak with you and only interact with salespeople virtually. Other buyers will wanna meet with you in person. So we can't look at this as virtual selling versus in-person selling. We have to look at this as selling. And we really need to have the tools available, the skills and knowledge available to shift because a buyer might wanna meet and then suddenly they're traveling and they wanna have some virtual meetings. So. As sales professionals, don't think about how to virtually sell somebody. Think about building your skills in the area of sales because from now on, you're gonna be jumping back and forth sometimes with the same prospect based on their specific needs, timing, et cetera, and priorities ultimately. So there is no such thing as virtual selling, there's just selling. Build the skills to get you there. And the last bonus tip I really wanted to share was this. What we've learned really from 2021, even the last couple of years, is that sales will continue. There are always fits and spurts. There are challenges that will slow down sales, but they will continue on. When the economy crashes, some companies do stop buying for a period of time, but eventually they come around. I know a lot of people that when the pandemic hit back in 2020, it really hurt them and they moved out of the role of sales because they didn't sell anything for a period of time that made them very uncomfortable. You know, when it comes to selling, things always need to be sold. There will always be a role in sales. So remember, if you're going through a difficult time or sales have slowed down, go back to what's worked for you in the past and continue with that, making slight adjustments and tweaks. And if you're really stuck, ask your existing customers, how are you buying today? What does the process look like? Do you have any tips or strategies on how I can change my approach? You see, as you continue, as the world continues to evolve, we need to evolve with it. And we do that by continuing to build our skills, stay in touch with our buyers, and move forward. So don't let times that are tough or difficult hold you back, right? Keep moving forward, stay confident, and you'll be successful. Speaking of being successful, about a year ago, I created what I call the 30-Day Action Planner. It's a sales planner meant for high-performing sales professionals that allow you to map out the basic activities you want to achieve 
by day, by week, and by month. There's even prompts as to what you should be doing included. I created this, there's a link below. Make sure you click the link, there's no obligation. It's my gift to you as a way to try and help you continue to move forward as a high performing sales professional. So click that link down below. All right, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button, comment below with your strategies. What lessons did you learn from 2021 that you can add to the list and hit the subscribe button. You can stay up to date when I release each and every video. Now, if you want to take these lessons and move forward, you'll need to increase your influence. Make sure you watch this video next where I walk you through some essential skills you'll need to have if you want to be influential in sales. And until next time, get out there, go sell something, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. Thank you.